Alrighty, I haven't posted a video in a long time, and I probably won't for a while, but I want to pick on our good old friend Richard Carrier. And uh, now, um, I'm going to target his claims made in On the Historicity of Jesus and elsewhere um, about, his, about the usage of the word sperma in the Bible. Now, Carrier will take to task the translation in Romans 1, uh, 1 through 3, in the ESV, which says, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised before him through his prophets and the holy scriptures, concerning his son, this is the phrase Carrier takes issue with, who is descended from David according to the flesh. Now, Carrier thinks the word descended should actually be manufactured. So descended from David should actually be uh, sperm of David, which is partially true. Carrier thinks that the body of Jesus was Davidic flesh, a.k.a. created from the sperm of Jesus. Now, to understand Carrier's theory, we have to understand uh, his view of how ancients viewed cosmology. Carrier states that there are three heavens. This is uh, our air, um, earth, this is our, our sphere. Um, then there's the region right below the moon, and then there's the firmament, which is a kind of fixed glass dome. And his followers receive private hallucinations from the divine being Jesus who was a heavenly figure. Now um, let's look at the word ginomai because Carrier will claim that Romans 1 cannot be used as evidence um, of Jesus's human descent even though the text says he was um, he came into existence from the seed of David. Carrier thinks that the word ginomai, that Paul's usage of the word ginomai is a big deal because in Galatians 4 and elsewhere when Paul wants to say something is born, he uses genapo to denote birth. Um, but he uses genomai to denote Jesus' birth. Now Carrier literally thinks that this means that uh, Jesus was manufactured from the sperm of David. Namely, Romans 1-3 should be understood as saying Jesus was genomai ek sperm of David. N namely, manufactured from the sperm of David. So God took a pretty much a sperm of David, a sperm that, one of his sperm and, and created Davidic flesh out of it. And this is supposed to be Jesus' flesh. But the problem is that this is completely wrong and has never been suggested ever in the past 2,000 years and Carrier thinks he's on to something. And of course I know you atheists out there who love him and lick the ground that he walks on will say, oh what a stupid little Christian apologist. But I mean, you have to deal with the evidence. Now, let's survey the term uh, ginomai. How does Paul actually use this term? Does he ever use the term ginomai to mean manufactured? The fact is, he does not. Romans 11.25, yeah, uh, Paul describes a hardening over Israel. He says a hardening over Israel has happened. The underlying phrases here are um, where Paul uses ginomai. Give no offense. Let all things be done in love. Our affliction which came to us. The ministry of death came. Now, I looked up this word, and this word tends to mean um, to come into being or to arrive. It has that sort of connotation of arrival or coming into being. Um, let all things be done for edification. Now, of course, it would be awkward to translate that, let all things come into existence for edification. Uh, but that's literally what the text is saying. The closest it ever comes, the word ginomai ever comes to, to becoming manufactured, at least in Pauline usage, uh, Christ became a curse to us so that the blessings might come. Now the funny thing about, about so, so you have the word became. Um, he made him who knew no sin, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. He made him who knew no sin to be sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Interestingly though, in uh, Galatians 3.13 through 3.14, the text says Christ became a curse for us so that the blessings might come. So we have two sort of different uh, usages of, of the word ginomai in the same sentence. Never once, and you can survey how Paul uses the term yourselves, never once does Paul use the term to mean manufactured. In fact, if you look at how this term is used in John 1, all things were made through the Logos. What it means by made is to come into being or to arrive. It doesn't mean manufactured. Um, and again, I could not find one location where Paul uses the word like this. Given that ginomai then means to come into being, what does the word sperma mean? Now, again, I looked this up 
throughout the New Testament, whenever it's used in connection with a person, it always refers to physical lineage. For example, in John, when, when the Israelites talk about, they call themselves the offspring of Abraham, the sperma of Abraham. Again, you can do this search yourself. Every single time sperma is used in connection with a human, it always talks about that human's physical descent. It always talks about that person's progeny. Paul uses it like this in Romans 9.29, in Romans 11.1, 1, in 2 Corinthians 11.22, in Galatians 3.16, in Galatians 3.29. The author of Hebrews uses it in, in Hebrews 2.16, 2.11, and 11.18. The Gospels use it like that whenever uh, it portrays the Jews calling themselves the offspring of Abraham. So you atheists out there who love Richard Carrier, who, who worship him, you are blind. You simply cannot reckon with the evidence. Sure, you will dislike this video because you've consistently failed to be honest. I want to take a look at one more uh, place in Scripture, particularly uh, Romans 9, 3. And I'll deal with Doherty's uh, pathetic rebuttal to Romans 9, 3. When Paul says that the Israelites are... Or when um, you know Romans 1 says that, that Jesus is, is from... He comes into being from the, the seed of David, from the lineage of David, according to the flesh. Doherty claims that that really means in the sphere of flesh, so in the same location as flesh. Here's the problem. The phrase according to the flesh cannot mean that. It has to mean according to natural humanity or according to human nature, which Paul views as corrupt and natural and mortal. Um, in Romans 9.3, when Paul says that the Israelites are his kinsmen according to the flesh, that has to mean according to Paul's humanity. Otherwise, the phrase according to the flesh is completely superfluous. Meaning, if Paul is simply saying that my that the Israelites are his kinsmen in the same location as Paul is, in the same realm of existence as Paul is, well, clearly he didn't need to say the, the phrase according to the flesh. But if you understand it like how every single commentator understands it, um, unless, of course, you're part of the new atheists, or you worship Dan Barker, or you worship Robert Price, or you worship Richard Carrier, which most uh, most people who who are running that crowd, running the mythicist crowd, do. Um, unless you actually uh, are just completely blind to the evidence, you have to recognize that the phrase "according to the flesh" has to mean according to Paul's humanity. Otherwise, the phrase is superfluous. There's no reason for Paul to have included it. Unless Paul's emphasizing the point that he has other kinsmen, namely those who are not according to the flesh, but those who are according to Christ, those who are according to the Spirit. That's why he can say, um, the Israelites are my kinsmen according to the flesh, um, because he's, he's making sure to emphasize that, that he has other kinsmen. Um, so, in conclusion, Paul believed Jesus was of human descent from David and from Abraham. A quick note, Romans 9, 5, he believed he was an Israelite. Right after saying, um, you know, that the Israelites are Paul's kinsmen according to the flesh, he says that Christ was, was an Israelite according to the flesh. He says that Christ comes from the people of Israel. Um, namely, he, um, he's from them. And the them, the antecedent of them, refers to Israel if you read it in context. And again, you can do this yourself. Quite honestly, the only way you can maintain that Paul believed Jesus was an ethereal sort of angelic being is just by the most patent dishonesty. Of course, atheists are going to dislike this. I understand that. Um, it's because you guys cannot be honest. And, and you might give some pathetic rebuttal like, oh, you haven't read Carrier's book, or oh, you haven't really understood Carrier's argument. But let's be real here. I have. And, and you guys are pretty much just desperate. Thank you for watching.